Hi, and welcome to the Wingo 5.0 overview video. This will be a somewhat different video than our previous release videos as we are still homebounded. However, as our Wingurus, working from home is in our DNA, and that includes collaborating on a video. We're very happy to release the latest version of our secure digital workspace as it will bring new features and enhancements in many domains. In the next couple of minutes, our CMO Arno Marriere and COO Steven de Winter will go over everything that Awingo 5.0 has to offer. From a quick recap on what Awingo and its architecture are, onto a deep dive into a variety of new features. Arno, take it away. Thanks, Lily. For those of you that are not very familiar with Awingo, let me give a quick introduction. Awingo is what Gartner would call a unified workspace solution. We make applications remote applications, legacy applications, desktops, VDIs, file shares, we make all of that available through the browser. And we do it in a very easy and secure way. Now let's have a quick look at the architecture because that picture really does explain a lot. End users take whatever device, they just log in through the browser and get access to their applications and desktops and files. Now, a window itself is a virtual appliance a virtual appliance that is typically installed in the same data center, be it private or public, as where the backend is running. Now, the simplest way to explain how a Wingu works is to compare it to a gateway. A Wingu is a gateway that you put front of your existing backend environment. That means you do not need a green, greenfield environment. A Wingu works with what you have in place today. And the beauty is a Wingu will talk standard protocols with that backend. RDP, SIFS, LDAP, uh, WebDAV, etc. All of this means you don't need to change your existing investments, your existing backend environment. And it also means that adding the Awingu component into the mix is a very quick and easy thing to do. And a matter of fact, a lot of businesses do this in a matter of hours. What are customers doing with Awingu, you ask? Well, use cases are fast. Work from home, work from anywhere, but also secure bring your own device and by extension, secure contractor access. Also customers use us to replace their Citrix environment, for example, saving money in the process, or they replace their insecure VPN environments. A whole lot of things that customers do. Why they're doing this? Well, this is where I would show the marketing slide. But in this case, I decided to actually show results of an internal survey that we did to our customers earlier this year. The question was simple. Why are you using a Wingu? And the results actually, they thankfully aligned to the marketing message. First of all, because it's a simple solution. It's easy to set up. It's easy to manage. We get very little support calls, etc. It's simple. Secondly, because it adds security and compliancy because of all of the built-in security features, etc., And this bucket is something that will extend further in a Wingu 5.0. Thirdly, because of the good TCO. And TCO is not just about license prices, where admittedly, a Wingu is fairly interesting compared to alternative solutions. But more so even is the, op the, the opportunity you have to reduce costs in support and in infrastructure, um, in a bring your own device, etc. Finally, it's the technology fit. As said, a Wingu does not require you to have a greenfield environment, a Wingu works with what you have in place today. And that's a very strong um, argument because your return on investment and your time to value is very short. Let's talk about a Wingu 5.0. At the end of the day, this is why we're here. But before I go into the nuts and the bolts of the release, I want to talk about the messaging and take it one step higher. And the momentum is really good today because remote working has never been more popular than today. Unfortunately though, a lot of businesses resorted to less optimized, less secured solutions to solve their immediate work from home slash remote work requirement. So, we see use cases that do VPN on unmanaged devices or open RDP on unmanaged devices or just pure capacity extension of VPN, etc. These are not the most secure, not the most productive, not the most, not, not the best ways of doing things. So with a Wingu, 
we will really position as your solution for work from home, work from anywhere, work from any device without the need of a VPN. And you'll say, well, you never need a VPN with a Wingo, and that's fully right. That is very correct. But we want to be very explicit about that. You do not need the technology from the 90s to work with a Wingo. And to make it even more explicit, we'll use the mention of a zero trust rate security. Because in essence, that's what a Wingo brings. And a Wingo is also referenced in that, in that context by many analyst companies. What is Zero Trust, you ask? Well, Zero Trust is not an isolated product, really, where in the old days we used to think of security as in a firewall or endpoint security. Security is not a single product. Security is an all-encompassing strategy. Uh, it touches your people, your devices, your networks, your analytics, etc., etc. Zero Trust is built on the idea that you cannot trust anything, that you always need to verify. Let me give you an example. It's not because you have the password of a VPN that when you log, when you log in, everything that's happening afterwards can be considered as safe. Zero Trust also is based on the idea that your IT security shouldn't be focused on one single location. People work anywhere, so we need to secure this context, this work from home, this work from any device type of context. And Zero Trust is also about removing some of the historical defaults. For example, the excessive privileges on accessing shared drives or accessing certain applications, uh, the use of simple passwords, the use of VPN. All of this needs to go in a Zero Trust world. Now, let's talk about a Wingu 5.0 and let's talk about the nuts and the bolts and the specific features. And we can group them into three categories. Category one, Zero trust great security. Not really a big surprise. You'll find things like context awareness and SIEM integration capabilities. Second bucket, UX enhancements, because it's all about the end user. This end user needs to work productively, efficiently, effectively, and securely. And so we keep investing in this bucket and we've kept doing so every single release. In this release, you'll find things like support for IME keyboards, the possibility to save your multi-display configuration or the ability to upgrade your color depth from 16-bit to 13-bit. The third bucket is core improvements. And here we really did a lot of work to improve Awingu at the core, making the Awingu solution more efficient and more effective in the way resources are being consumed. But also from a functional level, for example, the reverse proxy is now extended and now supports WebSocket-based web applications. Typically think VoIP web clients or CCTV web clients, etc. These can now very simply be aggregated into the mix and made available in a Wingu. This was the summary of a Wingu features, but let's have a deep dive into some selective features and actually look at the demo behind it. And this is going to be provided by Steven. Steven, the floor is all yours. In this demo, I will show you how the new multi-screen uh, settings work. So as you can see, I have a uh, desktop open. And as before, I can go to the display manager and I can add, for example, a uh, second display. The second display, I will move to the left of my uh, main display. And I will also save my configuration. So let's call this the two screen setup. Click on save, close. So as you can see, uh, I have uh, two um, uh, monitors and if I open an application I can move that to the other uh, display and work from uh, in there. If I now uh, close the application, as you can see my second screen is gone. If I start that desktop again, uh, Awingu will know that this is a setup where there is a saved uh, configuration and I can simply click on apply and it will open my uh, two screens again. And as you can see, uh, the order is also being respected. So I can move again thanks to my uh, second screen. For this first demo on context awareness, I will uh, show you a simple case in which I would like to restrict the access to the Awingo environment to a list of specific uh, countries. So to do that, uh, I have to go to the uh, user connector. And in the user connector, you see with the login permissions that there is now the possibility to add uh, context labels. 
So what I will do is I will uh, add uh, a, a context label which is called country and I will restrict it to, for example, Belgium, France. Uh, so only if I'm coming from any of those two countries, I will still be uh, allowed to uh, log in. So let me demonstrate. So as you can see, the login permissions are now restricted to uh, Belgium and France. Uh, this recording has been done from my uh, office uh, at home. So I'm uh, located in Belgium. So if I would like to log in, you will see this is uh, still possible. I have over here a remote desktop, uh, which runs in the Netherlands. So as you can see, this uh, remote desktop currently uh, runs in uh, Amsterdam. If I try to do the same thing uh, from, uh, from here, you will see that uh, I'm unable to log in due to uh, context restrictions. For this uh, second demo on context awareness, what I will do is I will restrict one of the features to a specific network. So uh, I'm currently uh, still in my uh, home office. And what I would like to do is I would like to restrict, for example, that I can only download from, uh, from here. So if I go to the features, you will now also see that there are uh, context restrictions uh, possible. So if I, for example, go to uh, file download, I could, for example, add a new uh, context restriction, which is called uh, network, and I will restrict it to my uh, uh, own uh, home network. So this is my uh, current IP address. And uh, as you will see, um, uh, if I go uh, to uh, download, uh, I'm still able to uh, download uh, files. So this is uh, no problem. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, downloaded the file. So now let's simulate that I'm going to another network. So let's uh, open my Wi-Fi settings and uh, switch to my uh, mobile phone. So um, switching to a uh, other network, as you can see, I lost uh, my connection. It should normally be back in just a few uh, seconds. So there it is, I'm, I'm back uh, connected. As you can still see, I'm still uh, logged into the uh, Awingo environment. I can still go uh, everywhere uh, I like. If I now go to the files and I select again this, uh, this document, you will see that uh, download will no longer be possible. For this last demo on context awareness, I would like to show you that it's also possible to add uh, context restrictions to specific applications. So as you can see, I'm uh, currently logged in uh, without uh, having provided MFA. So as you can see, I'm just logged in with the username and uh, password. And what I would like to do is I would like to restrict that I can start my uh, connection to my Active Directory if I didn't have uh, done any multi-factor authentication before. So I can go to my uh, system settings, manage uh, applications. And for example, for this uh, AD application, I can, for example, add a very specific context restriction, which is that uh, it can only be started if uh, MAV has been uh, um, uh, done. So let's uh, do it like this. So if I go back and, uh, for example, if, I'm, if I want to start this, uh, this desktop, that will be no problem. As you can see, it's uh, just uh, starting as, uh, as before. Uh, but if I would like to start that uh, Active Directory uh, desktop, let me first log out this one, you will see that it's uh, not going to work and that I have to uh, do MFA first. So as you can see, there is a, a lock uh, on, top of this, um, on top of this application. So I cannot start it. Um, if I would like to start it, um, Awingu says that I, I first need to uh, log in with multi-factor notification, which I will do. So let me uh, log off, let me log in. It will now ask explicit for a multi-factor notification. And uh, on my smartphone, getting my uh, code. Like this. Now I'm logged in. Uh, and as you can see, I can uh, start the uh, connection to the Active Directory. In this demo, I would like to show you that uh, as of Awingo 5.0, it is possible to send the audit logs uh, to an external system um, and do actions on that. So um, most commonly would be, for example, to, to put the audit logs in an external uh, system, but you could also use it to trigger uh, other uh, actions. So for example, if somebody logs in, start a desktop or do something uh, like that. Uh, for this uh, for this demo purpose, what I have been doing is I have uh, uh, my Awingu setup and I have in uh, Power Automate, uh, I have uh, created a very simple flow in which uh, I have created an uh, HTTP endpoint. And what I will do is I will send from Awingu to this HTTP endpoint the uh, audit logs. 
And then uh, once these uh, audit logs come in, they will just create an, an extra table in a uh, SQL database. But as you can see, you could also use this, for example, to automate or to, uh, to do other actions based on this uh, audit uh, event. And um, let me copy the uh, endpoint, uh, go to my uh, Awingu setting. So as you will see in the user connector, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, uh, there is now the possibility to enable uh, external audit logging. So what I will do is I will enable it and I will uh, enter my, uh, uh, my uh, HTTP uh, endpoint. So the uh, Awingu configuration is now uh, updating. Uh, what I have also done in the meanwhile, so this will just take a few seconds, I have also uh, on my uh, SQL Server, I'm connected to my, uh, my, my uh, database and to my table UC3. Uh, normally it should be empty, which is still uh, the case. So let's, uh, let's go back. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's all set now. So in my uh, user connector, I have the external auditing uh, enabled and that's the uh, endpoint. So for example, now if I uh, would uh, trigger, for example, a, a logout event. So if I log out from uh, my Awingu environment, that will have created an, um, an, an event in the user audit logs. And normally if everything goes, uh, goes well, if I go to my uh, database and I uh, check again, it should be uh, visible. Thank you, Stephen, for those demos. Very insightful. Now, Awingu 5.0 is combined with the release of new licenses and new pricing. The pricing can be found on our website. It's public information, awingu.com slash pricing. But let me touch on the new license queue that we've introduced, which is a named user model. Uh, as you might know or not, Awingu used to have only concurrent user-based licenses. Now we're adding a named user SKU, um, which is priced lower than our concurrent users, which is logic, uh, and which is available as of 50 named users. More information, feel free to reach out to us. Very happy to discuss. Thank you. Thanks, Arno and Steven. If you'd like to know more about Awingo, Head over to our website, we've gone over the newest features in our latest blog entry. Awingo 5.0 is available as of today, 28th of October, so all existing environments can be upgraded right now. Do you want to try out Awingo 5.0? Start your own 14-day trial at our website via awingo.com try.